Thank you, NSS Labas, everyone. Welcome to the second webinar. I will present to you in the second, uh, second part of the webinar the Advanced Integrated Electrical CAT Design. DDS CAT is a tool for the complete MEP engineer, not only electrical but also plumbing, heating, sanitary and ventilation. And of course the focus of this webinar uh, will be done on the, uh, on the electrical part. My name is Gertsan Laurensen and I will give you a sh short summary uh, with a few slides about the first webinar because of the project we are going to use in this, uh, this second webinar for the, uh, for the advanced part. Um, DDS has an innovative software tool for making design in 3D. Um, we started with a complete plan included with integrated light calculations uh, including safety lamps and safety lights. On the plan, um, in low voltage environments, we, we put in the fire alarm, the telephone, the KNX and other safety, uh, safety indications. And from this design, we, can also saw, uh, we also saw the connection of the cables and that will also be used in this second webinar. The cables will be planned on the routing systems which are integrated in DDS, which will be the cable way or the cable path for the connecting elements from the distribution boards. So as a quick overview, uh, those first slides will give you the setting on which model, which plan we are going to use during this, uh, this webinar. So let's start with the live demonstration. I've prepared the project on my screen and we will um, focus on cable dimensioning, voltage drop calculation and uh, also uh, a little step into the automation on distribution boards and layouts. So if I open the plan, we can see for our low voltage system that we designed a data rack on the left corner in the mechanical room and we would like to connect to one of the sockets inside one of the office spaces and for this I set up a distribution board overview which include with several sockets connecting to the data, uh, data sockets so for the, uh, for the internet connection or for the, uh, for the LAN connection and what we can see is that included in the, uh, in the model also the length will be calculated back to the distribution board. Now if I extend my distribution board by selecting uh, uh, another circuit we can easily copy the elements which are integrated and inserted into the model and uh, we can reuse the circuits. So in this case I'm putting in a six volt data network and as we enter a next sheet in order to supply the information for the second element, we can see from the six available circuits that no length is calculated. So if I now make back the switch to my plan model we can see there is one data socket not connected yet and if we choose of one of the circuit layouts we have set up then we can choose circuit number uh, cable number seven and start drawing from the circuit so automatically the information from the data network cable is integrated into the connection so now the object will be connected and because of the trunking which will allow the cableway back to the uh, distribution board or the data rack in this case, we can automatically see that the cable is calculated with a length for this element. And this allows us to have from the patch panel list in the overview also the cable length visible on the, on the report or visible on the screen and also visible on the uh, the bill of quantity which will be updated automatically. So when we create a complete part list we can identify the network cable and if we see the network cable now the length of the cable will be included with this connection point. Um, also from the patch panel list we have set up a layout from the distribution board included with the A1 component which was the first six, um, six circuits defined. So right now there is a second 
object created with the number A5 and this can be integrated into the drawing also for making plans in here. So let's see. So right now, so this is the board layout which is a setup and this setup can be created um, from, I will do it another way around. So I will enter my uh, distribution board layout and I will generate the scheme itself. So if I took my uh, A5 component and place it into my, uh, my board, then I can generate also inside the board all components from racks, from uh, connection, from joints, from cables, including with opening elements. And uh, from the board I can generate the layouts. So right now in the overview, in the layout, we can see the circuit A, A5 and A, uh, A1 included in the rack overview, and not only in 2D but also in the 3D representation. And this is also something I will show you on a um, low voltage distribution board from, uh, from the plan. So the connection and the link to the electrical schematical from the data rack is uh, manipulated in the same way we do for the low voltage systems. In the first webinar, we created a complete light fixture based on a calculation inside this particular office room and we connected with a cable uh, also to the trunk. Now if we look and open the elements for the cable, we can see for our load data and calculation that the length of the cable itself is calculated back to the central means distribution board connection over the trunking is calculating the, uh, the exact length. The cable itself, so what we can see in, in blue, which is now selected, uh, uh, has a different cable length. And what we can see from this, um, uh, this, this dialogue, um, we can see also the integrated voltage uh, drop calculation for the entire length. And we can also see there is an option to a main central, meaning if we have multiple distribution boards, we can also connect and calculate the entire voltage drop calculation. So for this model, I will create a main distribution board which will be positioned outside of the building. Uh, this could be inside a building and this will uh, uh, have the feed-in of the grid of the electrical system. Now inside this board, I will define the circuit list overview by creating new circuits. Uh, first of all, I will generate my supply based on a load and the phases we set on phase one, two, and three. Within this um, macro, we will select what kind of fuels will be used um, to have the, the circuit breaker in the, in the start of this distribution board. So we can have different, um, different overviews on circuit breakers and different representation. So if we have standard diozet, or if we have standard horizontal uh, fuses, um, we can make a selection out of it. So let me choose one of them as a setting on a, a D0220 amps. So this will be the first board, the first circuit in the board, um, with the naming of the supply. Now the next uh, feed uh, or the next circuit will be the supply to the sub-switch board. So this is a special supply in which we can add the connection from one board to another board, also to have the uh, load calculation and also to have uh, an overview on the used phases. So right now I will take this one as a, a type C uh, molded circuit breaker, 16 amp, and this will be the connection to the sub-circuit. Now within DDS we have the indication to what kind of circuit is defined and if I select a normal socket, one phase socket circuit, we will have a different representation uh, inside. So right now the indication in gray means there is no cable connected from one element to another element and this is something we would like to solve. So first of all I will draw the grid cable from the main uh, distribution board. So this cable comes uh, or will move from the grid into the distribution board. 
like this. And from the uh, uh, main distribution board, we will connect a cable on the ground to the distribution board inside our model. So we go along the path to get a connection to the main distribution board inside the building. As we can see, the main distribution board is um, recognized and if we make the connection, we get a notification because of the load, because of the length of this cable, that the dimension which was uh, initially chosen for the cable uh, will, uh, will, not, uh, will not be sufficient. So based on the load, we set up um, 58 amps. The cable in dimension itself will not, uh, will not be sufficient. So we need to either lower the load or in, um, in, improve or uh, enlarge the cable dimension. So if I now choose a 10 millimeter cable, then we can see that the connection from the distribution board to the cable, also to the sub-distribution board, is now fully yellow, means everything is okay on this particular part. The indication in red, which are shown here on the device tab, will be handled later, because this is also depending on what uh, kind of uh, loads are connected in the sub-distribution board uh, itself. So I will place a cable marker to indicate this cable. Now, if we switch back to the cable where we started, we can now see that the load of the cable calculation is not according, uh, only according the routing of the light circuit connected to the distribution board itself, but also the voltage drop is calculated back to the uh, main distribution board, so included with the cable length on the 10, uh, the 10 square meters, or the 10 square millimeters. So the, the changes in the cable type will also include the changes here. Now for our volt drop calculation, um, we can identify that within the load of this cable, the total summary of the connected lamps will result in a nearly 2.5 amps uh, current through this cable. And if we indicate that our switchboard cable um, we can now see that the uh, absolute voltage on this particular point is 224 volts. And if we show this for all the, the other components in this uh, area, I will make a selection for just the lamps. And if I activate my text representation, including with the, this mounting height, then also the other elements will be visible for our volt drop. So the Effective current on this particular lamp uh, light fixture will be 1.89 amps, resulting in 223 volts. And accordingly, or in the routing of the path, we will see to the last light fixture that we will have a different amps. So this is the last connected lamp, resulting in nearly 0 0.2 amps. So on each step, we can follow not only the current, but also the volt, uh, voltage, uh, voltage drop in volts, or we can activate also the voltage lob, uh, losses in, uh, in percentage. So if we activate the partex, we can see that in this cable, or at this point in the installation, we have a 1.7% volt drop. Now there will be some checking on this, uh, this cable, so we can see from the load uh, load and data tab that we are checking on reference on 3% um, and uh, with a total of 1.79 to, uh, to the main central, we are um, in line with what is maximum allowed. So let's do the same th uh, thing for uh, some other circuits. So within the distribution board, um, distribution board one, which was placed inside the um, inside the uh, the office uh, space, 
uh, we can define another socket. So for us it's easily to take one socket and uh, copy the entire circuit and uh, start drawing the cable. Now if I start drawing the cable inside my, uh, in my model, uh, I can start from a cable ladder or a cable trunk. Uh, the cable ladder will be automatically created to a trunk and if I now start from this trunk, I will get a notification that this will be a free cable which is not connected to a central, meaning I'm starting from the wrong trunk. This trunk um, of 100 mil is connected to the data network. So I can still start with a cable from this position, but then it will be not recognized for the entire connection for the cableway running to the trunk or the cable ladder in the, in the uh, top position. So right now, if I start my draw of my circuit, then this connection can be, uh, can be created uh, correctly. So I will jump into my cable duct and go to my socket and from my socket I will follow the cable path. Let's see. And make a connection to the different sockets. see here. So in this, in this case I don't want to recognize the cable, uh, cable duct in order to create a trunk but I would like to create a direct connection uh, from one, uh, one cable. Now this is the same message about the dimensioning so because of the length of the cable is now increasing we need to make an improvement based on the 1.5 square millimeters which is now entered in here. So I will take a 2.5 and can continue my cable. So in this case, if we activate also the different representation, we can see that the load, which is set to 16 amps, and this can be uh, visualized on uh, many ways. So we can activate that from the configuration of the current, which is set up here, the current rating or the actual current. Uh, there is an indication for, uh, for the load itself. So my uh, nominal uh, load or my nominal uh, value is uh, 16 amps for the circuit breaker and the load will also be calculated to 16 amps. Now the result of the cable calculation itself, if we calculate this cable, then we will see based on the uh, installation method, the calculation will be done accordingly to six values or six, uh, six steps will be calculated, not only volt drop itself but also short circuit and the overload protection, resulting into a minimum of 1.5 and we can overrule this by using the uh, cable dimension. And the cable itself can be calculated to a report and the report will give the uh, total information of this cable. So what is the nominal, what is the load, and if we uh, see, for example, the second, uh, the second circuit or the second cable for the lighting, we can see the load in here, and uh, in the report itself, all settings are visible. So we can optimize the system when possible um, to have a uh, different overview, when possible to have a minimized uh, dimension, uh, we, can, we can influence the entire system. So right now I will open up my electrical schematic for the main sheet. So initially we had the F10 as the end result. I made a copy to an F11, meaning that I can insert another sheet and automatically also the circuit diagram will be calculated and will be generated. And not only the single line diagram but also the multi-line diagram. So this consists on uh, either the representation in an industrial format for automation and uh, as we can see automatically the last circuits are inserted also here. From the uh, layout overview of the distribution board, if we say uh, look to the layout, we can set up from the main distribution board and place the symbol inside the model. And right now remember that we had the different uh, fuse settings so if we draw 
from fuse 1 to fuse 5, uh, we would like to start from this element and generate the fuse overview inside here. Um, so right now uh, we, can, uh, we can move them and if we draw the F1 to F2 then automatically the F3 will be the next selected um, as a fuse component to be drawn. So right here we will have the second row and if we would like to uh, create another one uh, we can also insert the last one, the F8 to uh, maybe F12 and that can be inserted in here. So the F12 was not needed because we ended with the F11. So right now this uh, uh, board overview can be inserted in here and also be uh, represented back into the front view overview and also the 3D overview for the, for the components. Now if we look to the single line diagram then I would like to use a, a different layout for the macro which is now drawn for a one phase circuit including with a contactor. So from the distribution board sheet uh, I would like to use my, my own layout. So we saw that from the insulation part we can have different layouts either with a protective device or we can have different settings for um, um, control for uh, uh, control layouts or for uh, lighting uh, lighting layouts. Uh, we will have different macros for connections to motors. So all of the components are defined as a layout and the layout can also be influenced uh, by ourselves. So if I take a next circuit to create my own user-defined layouts, I can include um, whatever I, I would like to have, uh, which will also be included into the macro. So right now I'm defining a uh, fuse with a two-way outlet, and this will be drawn onto my uh, onto my circuit. So the difference in representation, also in the overview for the automation, is if we can select not only what we have, but we can also select in a different representation that this board will be a socket and the other components we defined as a uh, light circuit. And this is also an object which is included in the call of the macro itself. So what we have for this circuit is a representation as a single circle. For the sockets we can choose the different representation in single line and uh, multi-line diagram and uh, we can also change all of the settings for the representation we would like to have in our schematical diagram. So right now I'm creating my own diagram and also the representation how this should look like. So I will switch back to the active view. Now selecting the circuit, um, I will use the option to edit the circuit itself. So now the circuit is um, editable and the components I don't want to have can be deleted from, uh, from here. So I don't want to have my terminal because I'm generating a, uh, a different representation. So right now if I insert another component then I can use a KNX component for, uh, for switching devices. So by adding a KNX we can insert a two-fold actuator and in this way I'm using a four-fold actuator on 10 amps and that will be included automatically into this model. Um, the representation for this sheet is done like this and right here I would like to use my single, uh, the single, uh, single channel right here. Um, for the second circuit I'm using from the same uh, KNX component, I'm using the second uh, free channel. So as we can see right here, the first channel is al already taken and choosing the second channel we can use the option for inserting. So this will be done and for the uh, next components we will use a relay contact um, which is a connector 
relay contactor that's with a one pole uh, 20 amps contactor element. So this uh, object is inserted in my uh, in my circuit, and from the component list itself, uh, I can also insert a second uh, contactor. Let's see in here. If I select show only used products, my listing will be generated to the uh, to the easy way, also included for the manufacturer, for example. So that will will in speed, uh, increase the, also the speed in designing. Um, so this is not not the correct representation I would like to have. So switching to what we have like this. Now the routing of the cables uh, can be done easily. So when I select this cable or this uh, um, fuse using some helplines, we can easily draw next of the circuit. So this is an intelligent line where you can continue from here to here. And if we start drawing from this component to this component, I will turn off like this also from here to here. So this is a complete layout we are going to uh, to design in order to have a uh, to have an overview of um, of the board. So from this endpoint I'm selecting the projected endpoint. So this could be the uh, uh, manual layout I would like to use for my next design. So when applying this setting, we can say this is a uh, manual inserted one pole protective device with two times four leads. Now this circuit will be updated and will will be applied into the model itself. Um, the advantage for this is that the components will be uh, automatically recognized. So we insert the two contactors. And if we copy one of the circuits, we can see that the two lines will be added. And on the elements Q11, there will be a Q12 and Q13. Um, on the other hand, for the component number one, we still see only A1, meaning that from the fourfold actuator on the KNX device, there are two free channels. And this, those will be applied into the, uh, into the representation here. So if I extend my sheet also with the KNX devices, then we can also visualize the KNX devices as equipment into the uh, into the into the overview. So let me show you this A1. So the A1 component is now inserted here, and we can see the cross reference to the circuits. Which will uh, or which I now use on sheet 55C, including with the KNX devices. So also on the single sheet, we have the reference uh, to the 71A 71A. Now, if we add another circuit of this, uh, uh, or now if we now add the new circuits, we can choose from my user-defined macros. We can choose the manual input, and within this manual input. We will have the questionnaire for the circuit breaker, and we will also have automatically the questionnaire for the KNX device. So right now there will be a second KNX device created, and also there will be two um, contactors created from uh, from the from the inserted layout. So we can see the A2 component is generated here without the cross reference, and if we now go to the KNX overview layout, we can insert not only the A1 but also the A2 and right now also this cross-reference to the sheet number 35 is handled exactly the same way we do here. Now for the components uh, Q14 we can include that contact in one of the, uh, the other light circuits so from the component F6 we would like to have a um, a new component based on one of the Q elements of one of the contactors. 
So if we choose the Q14, we can insert this one. And because of the numbering, we can already see that this is forgiven. So we take another one. Let's see this one. And we will insert also the contactor itself uh, to, the, to the corresponding circuit. Selecting the elements um, with the macro option, we can, uh, we can edit everything we would like to uh, in influence. Now, if we come back to the layout of the board, this was set up initially, uh, but right now we, uh, we have more components. The components can be placed automatically or they can be placed manually. So if we have a default setting for uh, the KNX systems, uh, we have the A1 component, we have the A2 component, and they can also be drawn. Uh, because of the uh, option right here to have the next component, we can start drawing the elements, uh, which are now included in here. Um, we will also have, for example, the fuses. So at the end, we had the F12. F13 and also the F14. So this can be set up quite easily and by regenerating the circuits also the overview from the inlay of the of the distribution board will be visible automatically uh, accordingly to the to the correct numbering. So from the main distribution board set up in our plan we uh, changed the cable number four, or circuit number four. Now, if I would like to do changes in this uh, main distribution board, so I will go to my settings, and now circuit number four um, will be selected as circuit uh, uh, with a different naming. I would like to renumber. So, for example, the parts from here to here, they will be cut, and they will be placed in top of here. So right now we have a complete different overview of the circuits and with my circuit tools I can renumber all circuit at once or I can also say I would like to renumber all cables or I would like to renumber all fuses starting with the number 100. So all of the components which are now influenced on this settings will be updated not only from the distribution board itself but they will also be updated from the plan itself. So if we go to the 2D plan, we can now see that this cable uh, has a different circuit numbering. And we can also see that the cabling here will have a different circuit right now for the, um, for the sockets. So this is one-to-one -one, uh, related to what we have in the, uh, the single-line diagram. So the updated layout and if we enter also the terminal list, then we will see that all terminals are generated on the next one. So this is a terminal overview. And if I can uh, check whether all, all terminals are now uh, included, um, I can also say from one of the circuits, so from the top row circuits, we would like to have a different terminal. So instead of the X1 terminal, we would like to start with an X2 terminal. And we can also renumber, starting with a, uh, a new numbering for the selected terminals. So right now, this is starting from 1, 1 on the selected terminals. Let's see. We can have this unselected. So the update has been done on the terminals. So there will be a split for the X1 right here, starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and starting with the X2, which is included in here. So we can decide to have the phase uh, counted, and we can also choose to have also the neutral counted uh, uh, simultaneously. So the link between the automation plan and the, the actual plan we have in 2D um, means we can either start from the layout of the distribution board itself 
or we can start planning from, uh, from the model. Uh, the advantage for the layout of the distribution board itself, meaning that we can have influence for the entire uh, uh, loads which are connected to the distribution board. So if we look to the light circuit, we insert it uh, in uh, right now number 8. There will be a load of 2.4 projected on phase 2 only. Now if we go to the overview of the single line diagram or the multi-line diagram, we can see that the load of this complete uh, distribution board is 51.3 kilowatts, meaning 74 amps. But if we investigate a little bit further, we can see that we have a 74 amps on phase one, uh, but we have a lower load on phase two running, and even the load on phase three is nearly 30 amps less than the load on phase one. So we have a, a possibility to optimize um, the overview for using phase distribution. So the phase distribution meaning that the cable which is coming here as a load of 74 uh, amps is now projected onto the load of the main distribution board. So for the main distribution board We can do the same thing for the sheets, so if we insert single line diagram, we will also have the overview of the sheet in relations to the circuits which are connected, so we will generate the circuits automatically. So right now the 74 amps on this board is directly related because of the connections to the distribution board. Um, and this is the reason why we have the device for the fuse in red because the nominal is set to 16 amps initially but afterwards connecting to the uh, distribution board inside the offices inside the uh, the connection for the sockets we end up on a load of 74 amps the 74 amps together with the 16 amps includes uh, a result in a 19 amps uh, load for a fuse which was initially set up to 20 amps so the red means pay attention to the situation uh, because of the connection of the loads, something needs to be done or something needs to be decided. Now we can influence this on, uh, on different ways. Um, if we go to the main sheet here, we can first of all use the function for phase distribution. And the phase distribution can be done on phase 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 in a, uh, in a single order. Or we can also base this, this one on the amps itself. So right now, I applied the phase distribution, which resulted into a maximum load of 15 amps. Now, from the 50 amps going back to the single line diagram, we will see the loads end up here. Meaning, if I go to my um, to my overview, then I can choose to have the option, uh, say update components dimension then automatically based on the settings on the 50 amps uh, DDS will give you the option to have a 50 amps uh, fuse. Now in the same way we can also optimize and update the components right here so based on a 66 amp loads then the pr uh, proposition from DDS will be 80 amps uh, fuse inserted here. So this is automatically updated onto the diagram and right now here uh, it's quite easy to see if we represent the connections that this is a connection as a supply in from the grid and this is the sub switchboard connection. Now as a final step for the distribution board overview um, we can see that we are working for each of the circuits with a load of 16 amps, but also a diversity factor. So if I would like to have all my sockets uh, running on a different diversity factor, we can edit the, uh, the component and we can say, well, we would like to have 35 percentage of uh, the load calculated forward. So right now, instead of the 50 amps, we are end up with 39.6 amps. And maybe if we also influence the light circuits, by editing them to 50, 
then we will end up with a load of 34.6. So right now, if we now update the elements and the components right here, so instead of a 63 amps, which is also included for the cable and also for the, uh, for the calculation, uh, we end up with a different setting. And now things are going back <coughs> to the situation that if we use the option right here to update all components, so for this one and this one, then we will optimize our system. So instead of a 50 amps, we can go back to 40 amps. And if we look to the uh, loads in here, we can see that the rating on the distribution uh, or in the phase shifting is represented like this. So the reuse of distribution boards, so if we have a distribution board set up, um, I'm now switching to the plan and get a notification about, uh, about this. Um, we can see that the actual cable uh, is being drawn from this element uh, to here. So right now I will move this cable into this position and delete the cable so it will be inside my, uh, my cable duct right here. Um, every change or every um, uh, difference, so for example if we, we, uh, if we move this socket half a meter then not only the socket will be moved uh, but also the cable length will be increased. So every change will interact with the model plan uh, in total. Now, if we set up a complete distribution board, uh, as we did for the layout of this board, we can also insert the entire board, including with all sheets, into another, uh, into another model. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm inserting a, uh, another board into the same project. So one of my uh, uh, users um, created a model 500, which is also an electrical model, and I would like to insert this model into my, uh, my project on the number 5. Meaning that from my overview of the main distribution board, distribution board and my data rack, there is also a model uh, 505, uh, including with all of the sheets which are inserted in this project. Now this is a more industrial uh, uh, automation in which several components are created with DDS. So there is a generator, there is a connection and all the components, as we can see, are also defined from the EDS from the circuit list. And this can be done a circuit list not only for low voltage or for uh, uh, current distribution or phase distribution, but this can also be used for uh, connecting with digital input and output. So for example, we have a, a setting on 16 amps digital input, and those digital inputs are referenced on one of the sheets. So if we can see to uh, page number 10, 7F, we can follow the cross-reference to this sheet. So the sheet will be opened, and we can see the different digital output cards. Um, and this is directly created from the model. So if we have the overview, we can see the different settings without cables, because this is about, industrial, uh, uh, about the industrial part. So running from the industrial part on PLC, uh, we can say we would like to have a four-fold uh, digital in. And within this component, the module itself will be chosen. And also the components for the digital input cards will be chosen. So if we have from the database different settings, we can also have my digital input one, digital input two, digital input four. That's why I didn't choose to have a 16-fold. Now this component is added in the, uh, the bottom of the screen, meaning that we can put in the components 
uh, on the last part, so this is a digital input. We can draw, we can place it here, and uh, with the connection possibilities, we can also have the uh, settings connected to the uh, connection line, which will automatically create a, um, a joint. If we move the joints, then also this will be uh, selected uh, from the component. Now, the digital 12 input was the component on uh, Z28. Now, if we look to the, to the overview on Z28, we can see that the naming of the digital input could be something else. So this is our motor export uh, setting on uh, type 2 like this. Export setting on type 2. So this is one-to-one -one related to what we have into the diagram. So also the PLC card will be, uh, will be listed in here. And if we uh, go, go on into this model, we can see that from the automatic part, all the information is still available uh, from the circuit list and connected to each other. So not only for, for housing, uh, but also for industrial, we can have uh, quite, quite advanced options uh, integrated into, uh, into DDS. Well, this brings me to nearly the end of this, uh, this second webinar. Uh, we saw advanced functions for making connections from the plan up to the automation. Um, and also this webinar will, will be recorded, will also be uh, available afterwards.